Hello and welcome to jasonnewland.com. My name's Jason and for some reason I've got a really manly voice today, very deep, full of meaning, grainy with history. I don't know why, it's uh, <clears throat> usually it's a bit lighter than this. Anyway, hello, hope you're well. Um, this is Tuesday, Chronic Pain, or Chronic Pain Tuesday. This is the fifth week now that I've done these. Um, I am late though, because, uh, don't worry, I'm not pregnant. Uh, I'm late doing these things, this thing, because last night I was in London at a party. So I wasn't able to uh, do the Tuesday on Tuesday, so today's Wednesday. So I apologise uh, if there's anybody that was waiting for this um, to be uploaded. But it's Wednesday midday and as soon as I get it done, I'll upload it and it will be available. Just want to say thank you to everybody for all your lovely comments. The previous couple of videos um, for your support the likes subscribing and please subscribe if you haven't already so yeah I'd like to I'd like to acknowledge that because uh, those of you that do like contribute and support me I, I really appreciate it so thank you so getting on with the video in hand in previous videos I've talked about distraction for chronic pain, relief, distraction, and I've talked about focus, like mindfulness, focusing on that part of the you know of your body which is causing the maybe the chronic pain. Focus can also mean focusing on a different part of the body which kind of mixes with distraction, I guess, in some ways, um, by focusing on a different part. So if it's the left knee that's causing a problem, maybe focusing on the right hand, which is feeling fine. So it is focusing, and I guess it is, you know, it's a distraction at the same time, but not distraction in the same way that I would class distraction, uh, as in like watching television or doing something completely different to take your mind, I, can't, I guess, away from your body. Because mindfulness takes yourself into your body. Uh, distraction is the opposite. It takes you outside of your body. In a sense, leaving your body there while you're outside doing something else in your mind at least you know so you're, you're focusing on something else whether it's a crossword puzzle puzzle um a jigsaw puzzle even whether you're watching television whether you're listening to music um whether you're playing music even whatever it may be you know there's so many different distractions available and I guess the best distraction is the one that works best for you um, and that'll be something that only you will know about only you will un you know know what grabs your attention so much that everything else kind of just melts away and it might be as simple as just holding your baby uh, if you have a baby or you know, um, playing with your grandchild or um, whole, you know, hugging your loved one, cuddling your, your wife or your husband or, or your father or mother or whatever, you know. It could be as simple as just human contact with another person um, as opposed to holding your own hand. But then human contact can help you even if it's for yourself. 
because providing you haven't got any pain or anything or discomfort in your left arm okay and your right hands okay just do this just do this just stroke down it gently and go like that on the inside of your of your wrist like that just gently see I do this because I do it myself sometimes because it's soothing it's comfort it's human contact and I know it's my own hand and there are jokes there somewhere but there is a degree of soothingness a degree of calm that can be had from that by just caressing yourself you know just like I shaved my head those of you that watched previous videos you know I've got a lot cleaned up you know tidied up face now a lot less hair but just stroking my head feels nice. I suppose it, it'd be more enjoyable if someone else was doing it. But it still feels nice, even when I do it. Just gently, and sometimes I will, I massage my head. It might seem like a weird thing to do. And sometimes, in some ways it feels better when I've got hair than it does when, when it's bald. But you know, just physical touch can be helpful. And I'm trying to give you lots of different like tips, a lot of different ideas that I have and that I've read and learnt uh, along the way. I went through a lot, a period uh, about twelve, fourteen years ago. About 14, 14 years ago, where everything was about chronic pain. I just bought every book there was to buy that I could afford on chronic pain and just, and it was just the same thing over and over again. It's, it's like buying hypnosis books or buying books on any subject. It gets to the point where you're rereading the same stuff. Uh, just maybe from a different perspective, which I find is really useful, especially with my brain, for whatever reason, that helps it to um, stick together or to become useful to me. So kind of just coming from different angles is useful. Maybe not for everyone, but for me, I find that to be useful. But I really got into all the different... Um, the books about chronic pain, mindfulness, as I said, distraction, physical manipulation. I'm not going to really try and teach any of that stuff because I'm not, I'm not a physiotherapist. I'm not, uh, I was going to say, I'm not a Reiki master. I, I did do Reiki. I did learn some Reiki and got to like level one or whatever, but, um, I'm not, an acupuncturist I did study massage um, and I did study reflexology uh, many years ago I studied reflexology twice actually 2003 and 2005 um, but I'm not gonna try and necessarily teach that there might be a few little bits I can teach you um, for headaches for example so with reflexology is I just said I'm not going to see it and not going to do anything but then, then I go and say it with reflexology the hands and the feet are kind of parallel to each other so that's the thumb that's the big toe you know, kind of obvious palm bottom of the feet um, so for headaches as an example the top of the thumb that if you massage you know like with this 
Oh, my voice, my voice really is going crazy today. You know where the the circle bit of the thumb is? I don't know. Well, it's just, it's called a fingerprint. Um, just massaging that bit. As hard as you feel comfortable to do. And, you know, you can do your thumb. If you can reach your, your, your toes, I can't really reach my toes anymore. Um, I have to ask, you know, go to your doctors to check they're still there. They, they are there though, but if you can reach your thumbs, if you reach your, if you can reach your toes rather, give it a go on your toes because it's a bigger area. Toes are bigger than your thumbs um, and do your thumbs as well, do both. But just massage, just press, press in. I do it quite hard. Um, but you know, do it so it hurts, but not proper pain. You know, just so it's so you can feel it's being dug in, but it stimulates the nerves. That's what you're trying to do. Stimulate the nerves. Some would say there are crystals that grow in those areas, and which causes a blockage, which can cause a headache. Um, toxins and stuff like that so you you break up the crystals now if you learn reflexology and you do it in people's feet you can feel the crystals you can feel like the crunching in their feet i don't feel it so much in my hands so the the thumbs are a really good place to put pressure on to relieve headaches and eye strain because that represents the head let's say anxiety and of course you can do that with headaches as well in the middle you know between your finger and your thumb in that both sides it can relief I actually feel it now I can feel it back of my head shoulders just feels relief and again it's it's just one of many things you can do. And don't overdo it though, I would say, because then you can end up with pain there. Bruising, because obviously if you keep, if you press too hard and you know, you can damage this, the, the tissue temporarily to become a bruise. But if you just do it, just so it's hard enough to feel it, um, but not enough to bruise it because you don't want to if you bruise it then you can't go back you're not going to want to push it again so you're missing out on a technique which is useful and if you do both sides now i actually feel relaxed when i do this it actually does relax me i should do it more actually so right in the middle just there and there. Hope you can see what I'm doing. And just sometimes you just go like that and just just pull it in. Of course, you can actually go to the the, the neck itself and just gently massage your own neck if you're able to reach your own neck I know not everyone can and of course if your neck is injured or damaged or or you know don't don't do that don't touch it so don't do anything that causes more pain that's what I'm trying to say because um, it defeats the object but if you can reach the back of your neck and just gently you can just gently lightly just go like that on it just to give it some nice kind of feeling because your neck will naturally relax to that because it's a it's just a tender thing tenderness relaxes us can get us excited as well but generally it's a relaxation 
And then you can just start to massage, just gently. And again, you can do it up and down your spine part of your neck. So just do it up and down your neck, just gently. Because so much of headaches is because of the neck, because of maybe the blockage, there's uh, the blood's not really getting through as much due to stress. So the more relaxed your neck is, in fact, if your neck is relaxed, it's very unlikely that you can have a headache. It's hard to have a headache and have a relaxed neck at the same time. In the same way as your eyes. I'll take my glasses off for this, can't see anything. Put my gla glasses down. See, or for your head as well, I, what I like to do is massage my head like that. So I don't actually massage the eyes themselves, but just around the eyes. Because again, when the eyes are relaxed, then you don't have a headache. It's, it's rare that you can have relaxed eyes and a headache at the same time. There's something, it's like the any kind of headache relief seems to come out of the eyes and the neck. It's kind of weird, really, but... By human touch, wash your hands first, obviously, if you're gonna do this. I've just washed my hands. Um, otherwise, you might make yourself dirty. And the reason I said don't touch your eyes is it's not really a good idea to touch your eyes anyway because the germs, even when you wash your hands, there's still going to be germs there and your eyes can just be affected quite easily. I don't know why I keep taking my glasses off. Like I'm pointing to my eyes like you don't know what eyes are. You know what eyes are, you can see. I look really weird without my glasses. Or is it just that I can't see myself as well? Hmm. So that's a few little things. There's a, a lots of different techniques for um, reducing pain that are physical, that are um, physical manipulation or touching your body in some ways or pressure points is another way um, there's a thing called um, EFT which is <laughs> what is it I forget what it stands for now um, so I learned this years ago and it's it's a basically it started uh, The idea behind it is the meridian system, which the my, my words are gone. That's great to happen when I'm doing a video. So when people are doing the putting needles in, okay, acupuncture, there's a meridian system, and how EFT works is it works on a meridian system but without the needles so it says well okay instead of needles we'll tap on those parts instead of needles so we'll tap on it and then um do some certain uh, certain it's like a procedure but it's really good i'm not going to do it today or should I do it? Maybe I should do it now. I've mentioned it. Um, but the thing about this is 
there's more to it than what I will give it. You know, I'll have to, I need to like look look it up again and just make sure I'm doing it properly because I don't I don't really feel like I'm in the a teaching mode like I'm teaching you how to do it, but I'm just giving you some ideas about what is available. So I would suggest seeing a professional therapist if you can. Uh, you know, regarding acupuncture. I've had I've had acupuncture, I've had reflexology, I've had I've had lots of different things and I've learned lots of different things and I do see the value in all of them. I'm not really one of these people that's that thinks that that's trained in one thing and thinks that that's the best thing there is and everything else is just defunct and you know uh, inferior um, because I have studied lots of different things uh, some people some hypnotherapists or hypnotists are really negative towards counseling well I've got a degree in counseling I started learning hypnosis many years before how can I be negative towards counselling? You know, I spent three years full-time studying the thing, plus another few years working full-time, counselling people. The idea that you have to kind of choose one thing seems a bit silly to me. And everything has its value, even if it's not valuable to one person, it may be valuable to another person. You know, the, like a simple technique. Like you could just, it's say if you had, let's say I've got shoulder, I've got shoulder injury, so I've got shoulder pain uh, that comes and goes. So I just say to my body, to my shoulder, to my unconscious mind, I'd like the the pain in my shoulder to reduce by 50%. over the next few minutes and I'm going to do nothing but just put my trust in my unconscious mind um, please can you do that for me uh, thank you and to have trust faith in yourself just say I leave it with you yourself to just reduce that pain reduce that discomfort in your shoulder or wherever it is and then do nothing just get on with your day read a book watch television not to distract yourself but just because that's what you want to do or you can just lay there or sit in a chair and observe your shoulder or whichever part of the body it is and just observe it reducing. Not doing anything. Just observe it. Notice and just enjoy the feeling of that pain just reducing naturally, slowly and naturally. Without any effort on your part. That's something you could do. So, last night when I thought about, oh no, I haven't been able to make a video, what shall I do? And I decided to do a video on changing the sensation, purposely changing it. Um, but not in an obvious way. So, with this, it's a technique, um, and it's one of the first ones I ever used, one of the first techniques I ever used, and as is, I think, quite normal with people who find something that works, I kept using it, because it worked, and that excited me uh, it didn't stop me from using different things but it was just 
it was like one of those things where, well, this works. Why bother with other stuff if this works? But I wanted to try new things. I wanted to test out old ideas and um, do something to suit the individual person rather than just wanting, wanting them to adapt to what I'm doing, you know, adapt to my technique. I didn't want that. I wanted to, to adapt my technique to each person individually. Oh, that's a weird noise. But I can't do that on a video like this. I can't adapt to your specific issue because I don't know what it is. Um, if we were in a room, then I would adapt. So the best I can do is try to do lots of different things and hopefully you'll find something that suits you. Hopefully you find more than one thing that suits you. But you know, if you can find one thing that really does give you what you need, then what I've done is worthwhile. So this technique is something that I did you know, many years ago and I just, I still like it because it's very simple. Um, uses imagery so you know it's uh, it does entail using your imagination but not like in a ma in like a big way just a very basic way really but at the same time there's mindfulness within this um I guess it's mindfulness and distraction at the same time. So focus, mindfulness and distraction. Kind of. But you know, you'll, you'll see for yourself. So I'll do the technique now. And uh, I don't know what I would call it. I guess just... In fact, what I'll do, I'll, t I'll go through the technique and then we'll do it. I'll tell you what the technique is. To start with, um, when you've got your eyes closed, you know, that's when we do it, uh, all I do is get you to focus on the part of your body where the pain is. Uh, so I won't mention the word pain, I'll just say focus on that part of your body uh, where the discomfort is, or just focus on that part of the body. You'll know what I mean by that. So you'll go focus on that part. And ideally before and after, if you want to kind of get a gauge of where you are and how you've progressed and just so you can, I don't know, just for your own interest maybe, you might want to give it a number out of 10, zero to 10, uh, 10 being the worst pain it could be, zero being zero, zero pain. And gauge where it is before you do whatever exercise or technique that we do. Because then that gives you an opportunity to test it at the end and just focus on the pain or the, the area where the pain used to be. Got my nipples erect, that's weird. Um, and then you can see how it's reduced. So if it was started off at being a seven and now it's a three, it's a success. Simple as that. And then success leads to more success. It leads in your to your faith in the exercises or the techniques. Then you have more faith in yourself. You have more, um, maybe more motivation to try out new things. And um, just makes things easier and it makes it more interesting and it also lets you know that what you've done has worked this stuff works so I wouldn't be doing it I'm not I'm not that bored that I would make a video just just for the sake of it trust me this you know there's a reason why I'm doing this and it's to help people 
and if I can do that then I will if I wasn't if I felt I wasn't helping anyone then I'd stop making the videos so I'm not going to offer you stuff that is no good I, everything I offer you is things that I have tested either on myself or other people tested sounds wrong doesn't it but you know that I've I've used I've reduced people's pain I'm I've had extreme situations in the past um, I'll give you an example of one person he was had to actually not undo that one this this person was in hospital uh, he had stomach cancer and he had to have his stomach drained and it was an excruciating um, thing to have done and it's very intrusive physically intrusive and he'd had it done before and it went wrong and so he was absolutely petrified plus he was in pain a lot of pain so I went to see him he refused to have the te the, the thing done until I'd seen him and done some hypnosis with him so I went to see him did some hypnosis reduces anxiety but also reduced the pain and he had the technique done yeah it wasn't he didn't like wasn't eating a sandwich smiling and laughing while it was being done you know it was still um an intrusive process it wasn't pleasant but it wasn't as unpleasant as what it had been before and he wasn't anxious about it he just let it get it was done had to be done and um, I wasn't with him while it was being done if I had been I probably could have you know uh, decreased any unpleasantness while it was in process might have grossed me out though but you know the bottom line is he dealt with it in a calm relaxed way and there was no pain so there are lots of different stories I could give you but that's just one as an example of uh, I did these this technique with okay so the technique basically is focusing on a part of the body as I said give it a gauge 0 to 10 10 being the, the most painful it could ever be 0 being 0 pain so if it's a seven just look look that in your head it was a seven you can write it down if you want so now um the next thing to do is with your eyes closed or your eyes open it's up to you however you visualize but i always find that by closing your eyes it takes out distractions you know outside things reduces your senses so you know it's you're basically then focusing on what you hear and what you feel um, and it magnifies those those uh, senses I, f I find so with your eyes closed you would then imagine a part of your body and then imagine it moving that pain moving out of your body so I'm, I know I'm pointing to my chest but it could be in your shoulder your knee your leg your head your hand your toe whatever wherever it is your back imagine it moving out of your body in front of you okay and so if it's in your back you can just move all the way through your stomach all the way out of your body in front of you just the pain And you can see it and you can notice what color it is so the color whatever the color it is and just notice it might be moving around it might have a shape it's got to have a shape so it's going to be some kind of a shape 
So the first thing you do is you change the color. And then you change the color again. Then you change the color again. And just do it a few times, just play around with it. Change the shape. Change the shape again. Make it smaller, half the size. Change the color. Does it have a sound? Is there a sound connected to it? If there is, what is the sound? And then change that sound to something else. Play a different song if there's a song being played. Change the color again. Change the shape. Reduce it even more. Stretch it. Maybe cut it into bits. So there's a few little bits. Maybe change your colors, but have them all different colors. You can do all kinds of things like that. And then eventually freeze them. Turn them to ice or turn it to ice if there's only one, one chunk. Turn it to ice, let it drop on the floor. And then just watch as the sun comes out and melts the ice. Maybe as it drops on the floor, it cracks and breaks into pieces. And then the sun comes out and melts all those pieces very quickly. Then you go back and measure the level of pain in that part of your body and lock that down. So maybe now it's a three or a two. Maybe it's gone completely. And that's, that's a technique. It's a very simple, very, very simple technique. And I guess you can use it so many different ways. You can just play with it. You know, you can, if you've got a color that's green, so let's change it to blue. And you can then split it up into five pieces and shuffle them around and have them moving around and then put them into one piece. You know, you can turn it into butter and have that drop onto the floor and, you know, watch the sun melt the butter. Or you can just decide to just shoot it into the sun. See the sun and just shoot it into the sun. So it just goes and dissolves and just into the sun, gone. So many different ways you can do that. So give it a go. That's why I say, give it a go. Um, I was wondering, do you need me to actually do, do the technique with you? I can do that if you like, we can do it. So I'll just do it very basic and then you can change it around, you know, if you want to. So I'll do the, I'll actually lead you through it. So if you, cl if you close your eyes, if you write down first of all what number it is on the scale of 0 to 10, close your eyes, focus on that part of your body, and just allow that part, just the pain, nothing else, just that energy to move out of your body, in front of you. And with your eyes closed, you can actually see it in front of you. And just notice what color it is. And if it hasn't got a color, you can give it a color. You can make it green or blue or red, whatever you want to do. 
and then notice, is it moving? Is it moving clockwise? Is it moving anti-clockwise? Is it just shaking? Is it moving up and down or side to side? And whichever way it's moving, just move it in the opposite way. So it's, if it's moving clockwise, just stop it and start it to move anti-clockwise, as an example. And just noticing the colour, because sometimes the colours change naturally, because when you reverse the movement, something naturally can happen with that image, with that energy. It just starts to change of its own accord anyway, naturally. It's as if you, the intention behind what you're doing is just explicit and that energy knows the intention behind what you're doing right now what we're doing right now and it's just being compliant it knows that your intention to do this is to reduce the pain is to reduce any tension to reduce the effect that that feeling, that energy was having on you. So the intention behind what you're doing will have an effect on what happens now. So sometimes it will just start to change color naturally and you can just observe that if that's what happens. Or you can purposely change the color yourself. Maybe change it now. And again, maybe change the color again. And one more time, changing the colour. All you could do now is actually change the shape. Notice the shape it is now and just change it. Stretch it the way you would stretch dough if you were making bread or plasticine if you remember that, stretching something or jelly, although jelly would break. Maybe jelly would be a good example. Maybe by stretching it, it does break. Breaks into small parts, floppy, just floating there in front of you, lifeless, not really having the energy it once had, knowing the reason behind why you're doing this has taken away any kind of energy that was there, any kind of power that you felt there was originally will have now just dissolved naturally. So as you focus on this, you can change the shape again into any shape you choose. It doesn't even have to be a, like a normal shape, like a triangle or a rectangle or a circle. It could be like a jellyfish or it could be like a anything, like a piece of rock or bit of wood, or like a little sculpture. Maybe that sculpture could be made out of butter, or ice. So 
changing the colour again. And changing the colour yet again. And you can reduce the size of that shape or those shapes by 50%, just shrinking them down like an old prune, shrinking like a raisin, dried raisin, shrinking like a brown, dusty leaf, just shrinking away into nothing. Changing the colour again. And just check if there are any sounds connected to this. Energy that was there before it changed. You can just maybe change that sound. Make it something silly. Some silly tune that's not relevant to anything. Maybe you want to do that anyway, even if there wasn't any sound. Playing the Benny Hill tune, theme tune from his television shows. You know, that was my impression. Um, I went on a bit longer than I actually anticipated. I think we all agree maybe that maybe there was a point where it got a little bit uncomfortable because I was going on a bit too long with that music. At least I didn't do two, two verses. And you've got this image in front of you, just there. It's doing nothing. It's, it's just become lifeless. And you can just allow it just to drop on the floor. And you can turn it to ice if it's not already turned to ice. Or you can turn it to butter, whichever you know, suits you. And have the sun come out. And as the sun shines brightly, melting that image that used to have that energy, melting it, what's left of it. It's like an empty shell now just melting in the hot sun, melting till there's nothing left. you can see now on the floor is a shadow the word peace and you can open your eyes focus on that part of your body that you focused before notice what number it is zero to ten Zero being no pain at all, ten being the worst it could be. And write down how you feel right now. And that's it. That is uh, the technique. And... Uh, you can just use so many different varieties of that technique. 
it's actually amazing really how many different things you can do and even when I was doing it I was thinking of new ideas uh, to add to it but then I thought no I better just stick to what I originally said so that you know just just stick to what I originally said because that's what I said I was going to do but I really started having these ideas of you know different things that I could have done so you know if you haven't given it a go yet if you didn't do it just then then give it a go let me know how you get on and lots of different things you can do that's just one of them and you can adapt it to your own specific needs so I wish you well have a wonderful week um, at the moment I do three videos a week Tuesday I do chronic pain Tuesday Thursday I do sleep hypnosis weekly and Saturday I do Jason Chats Saturday vlog um, so you can join me on those other videos as well um, please subscribe if you like what I do please like it if you like what I do and um, please leave a comment let me know how you get on thank you very much let me know where it went from if it went from a 9 to a 4 or 7 to a 2 or whatever it was I'd be really interested to get your feedback uh, thank you very much. Uh, my name is Jason Newland. My website is jasonnewland.com. Have a brilliant day. Have a brilliant week. And uh, lots of love. Bye.